All right, so real quick before we get into the plugins, most of us already have a DAW we like to use. I use Ableton. If you don't have a DAW yet and you want to try something free, I would recommend Traction 7. It's a completely free program. It's not a light version. There's no limits to how many tracks you can have on a project. There's no limits to how many plugins you can use. It's absolutely great. So let's get right into it. first plugin I want to show you is called TDR Nova. It's by Tokyo Don Records. This is a four band parallel dynamic equalizer. Here's your four bands. The parallel part would be this knob that lets you mix some of the dry signal up underneath the EQ'd signal, hence running it in parallel. Um, there are built in high pass and low pass filters over here that are super handy. Um, I use these a whole lot when mixing. Now the dynamic part of this equalizer, I'm going to show you a couple examples of. Let's say we have this ride symbol here. It's a little harsh. Um, there's too much treble. If I were to just kind of take a band and turn the treble down, it would make it sound better, but the harshness is only at the very beginning of this sound right here at the attack. And what I want to do is I want to turn down the EQ at the very beginning, but then leave this long tail alone so it's nice and airy and bright. So let's take this um, EQ band back to zero. Let's put it at about 8 kilohertz. That's a good spot for harsh, trebly sounds. I'm going to turn on this threshold. I'm going to take the attack and release as fast as they'll go. Why not? And you'll notice once I start to turn this threshold down and hit play, the EQ ducks down at the very beginning of the sound and then jumps right back up. So what that's going to do is it's going to fix the harshness at the very beginning, but then it's going to still leave this long tail alone so it can be nice and crispy. Um, this also works as a de -esser. Let me mute this band real quick. This sample I have pulled up kind of has a harsh S sound on the word say. If I say goodbye, if I say goodbye, right here. I say, I say. Same thing with the ride symbol. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to turn the exact same thing on. And if you listen to it now, if I say goodbye, let's get the cue a little sharper. If I say goodbye, if I say goodbye, listen to it bypassed. If I say goodbye, if yeah. I say goodbye, say, 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 if I say goodbye, that's some pretty hefty technology for a free plug in. All right, moving along. So, before we go any further, I thought the best way I could show you how all these plugins work together is to have them all inside of one song. I have a real simple little drum loop going here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these together. And then we're going to start processing these drums. All of these plugins are turned off right now. And we're going to take them one at a time. Now the very first one is just super simple. This is the TDR Nova. And all I'm doing is rolling off some of the super low lows and leaving a little bit of room for the sub bass frequencies. One of the most basic but effective things you can add to a drum group is room reverb. This is the TAL Reverb 4 by TAL Audio. This is pretty much everything that I need in a reverb plugin. The size and diffuse kind of work together to determine how long or short the decay is. This delay will kind of make the reverb a little bit late and it and it'll back it up off the transients a little bit. This modulation section, I'm going to be totally honest, I don't totally get it. But what I have noticed is when I turn the amount all the way down, the reverb sounds kind of phasey and static. And when I turn it up a little bit, 
It sounds like it's creating some movement and basically just sounds better. This is where all the magic is right here. The low cut filter and high cut filter. This is letting you EQ just the reverb. Instead of one single dry wet knob, they have a dry knob and a wet knob, meaning that this is also a parallel plug-in. That's a super huge plus for me. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of this. just to emulate the sound of drums being inside of a room. Next, we're going back to Tokyo Don Records. Um, this is a compressor. It's called the Kotelnikov. I'm probably pronouncing that a little weird. This is honestly the most fun I've ever had messing around with a compressor in my life. Um, let's see, we have the basics, the threshold, the ratio, the attack. The release is unique. Most compressors let you either choose between a peak release, which is usually going to be a little harsher and more aggressive, and then an RMS release, which is usually going to be a little bit smoother. This peak crest knob kind of lets you either use just the peak, just the RMS, or a mixture of the two. And if you click on this question mark up here, and by the way, this is true for all the Tokyo Don plugins if you click on this little question mark and then hover over anything it tells you what it is so under peak crest it basically says that the optimal state with peak crest settings is between 3 db and 8 db so if you hit play you're going to see it alternating between an rms release and a peak release and i've never seen it alternate like that and I'm also glad that you can choose one or the other and you're not just stuck with the alternation either. Um, the soft knee, this is sort of like an attack for your threshold. So this is going to be a little bit smoother curve when you turn it up and it's going to be a little bit more abrupt when you turn it down. You've got your makeup gain. You've got my favorite thing in the world right here, a dry mix knob to where we can what? Run it in parallel. We've also got a stereo sensitivity parameter over here and this is just how sensitive it is to the stereo material the manual suggests that one extreme has cons and the other extreme has cons and that normally the best is just somewhere in the middle this is really cool this is a low frequency relaxer if you want to leave the low end alone which on a mastering chain or something like that would be really handy if I put this on 100 hertz, then from 100 hertz down to zero, the compressor is going to be leaving it alone. The coolest feature on this compressor, and why for me it's the most fun to mess around with, is this delta feature. And what this is doing is it's giving you the inverse of what's happening. It's showing you what it's taken away. Being able to hear the invert, like... For instance, listen when I turn this soft knee all the way up in delta mode. And then when I turn it all the way down, hear how much choppier that is? Being able to hear the inverse is the greatest thing in the world. So this right here is definitely a plug-in that I'm probably going to just keep using forever. I like it better than compressors I've paid money for. We've got a little light compression going on. Let's bring that down just a hair. All right, next up, we got the saturation knob, and this is by Soft Tube. It's just a simple one knob saturator. Um, if you set it to neutral, it adds saturation to the entire frequency range. If you want to leave the low end alone, you switch it to keep low. Or if you just want to add saturation to the mids and lows but leave the very top treble end alone, you can do keep high. I'm going to do neutral on the drums because I kind of want it to add a little bit of lows and highs.
Next up, we got Roth Air. And this is by a guy named Daniel Rothman. It basically is a way to add some treble and some high end and some air, but it does it in a, in a not very harsh way. So let me turn this mix down. You select your frequency right over here and how much air you want right over here. I usually leave these thresh and gains alone. And here's what it sounds like. Bring the mix up. Turn it off. <laughs> See how closed it sounds? And now it sounds open. Off. And back on. This is a killer find right here. Daniel Rothman, wherever you are out there, salute. Up next, we have the good old OTT from X for Records. You'll notice here that I'm only using this at 9% on this drum bus. So let me turn it down to zero. Hit play. Let's bring it up. Without it. With it. It just kind of opens it up even a little bit more. It kind of gives the sound a stretchy, elastic -y, bouncy kind of sound. So let's listen to the whole chain deactivated. And let's turn it on. Sounds pretty good. Before I move on to the bass, I want to know what frequency the kick drum is peaking at. This is Span by Voxingo. This is just a spectral analyzer. It's just a meter. It's not affecting the sound in any way. It's just a readout. So I'm going to hit play. And it's going to give me a much clearer readout of where everything is. Um, I'm going to hit hold. And this is going to be my kick drum, and it's going to be peaking at about 90 hertz. Now, let's just make a mental note of that for a second. Kick drum, 90 hertz. And let's move on to the bass. One of the general rules of mixing is that your load of sub frequencies should be kept in mono while the rest of the frequency range remains in stereo. And that's basically because if your low frequencies aren't in mono, they're going to be kind of like meandering around the stereo field looking for a home. And when you put the sub frequencies in mono, they stay tight and stationary and it makes for a lot punchier, better mix. This is bum, 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 bum. A1 Stereo Control by Alex Hilton. What this plugin is going to let me do is put my low frequencies in mono while leaving my high frequencies in stereo. This is called Stereo Tool. What this is going to do is just meter out what's happening in our stereo field so we can actually see what this plugin here is doing. I'm going to turn off the A1 stereo control for just a second. And I'm going to turn on this EQ. Now on this EQ, I've used the low pass filter here and I've rolled off everything except for the very, very sub frequencies. Now, when I hit play, we're going to see where on the stereo field our sub frequencies are right now. Okay, that is not good. That is literally our sub bass trying to find a home and failing. So, if I click this stereo control plugin back on, I'm going to turn on right here where it says safe bass. 
this is going to mono out the frequencies from 150 hertz on down to zero. Now let's look at what our sub frequencies are doing. That straight line right there means they're in mono. So now when I turn this EQ off and we listen to the entire bass sample, 150 hertz is a good general starting point. Um, some people might like to do more around like 100 or 120 and heavy dubstep and producers of more like aggressive style bass music, they'll usually go around 200 hertz and below into mono. Uh, for the bass line, I used a synth called Alpha 3 by Limplug. This is a really common freeware synth. A lot of you probably heard of it, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time other than saying it's a super versatile synth. It does pads, leads, plucks, bells, bass, whatever you want. It comes with a ton of presets. It's a whole lot of fun. Now the reason my bass line is broken up into two separate channels is because this note right here is the root note and it's a high E. And it's, it's high for a bass note. These lower notes were naturally getting more of a thump. So in order to match the thump of this high note to the low notes, I used a plugin called Brainwork Subfilter by Plugin Alliance. This is just a plugin to like sculpt your subs and give it a boost. It works really good on like bass guitars, acoustic instruments and stuff like that. So this is without it. And this is with it. I grouped those two together and let's see what we got on the group chain. Now, this is an Ableton sidechain compressor. I could not find a simple free sidechain compressor plugin. Not that worked for Mac and Windows. I think there's some that work on Windows, but I couldn't find one that worked on my rig. I'm using Ableton sidechain compressor to sidechain the kick to the bass, but most DAWs have a sidechain compression. Even Traction 7, which I recommended at the beginning of the video, has a sidechain compressor on it, which I tried out and it works great. So, let's pull up this EQ to see what I did to the bass group. This right here is me just rolling off the ridiculously low lows from 16 hertz and down. Those are inaudible. Um, just a tiny bit of mud cleanup, probably. So, right here, I've notched out an EQ at 90 hertz. And the reason I've done that, if you remember, our kick drum is peaking at 90 hertz. So the reason I turned down 90 hertz a little bit on the bass is to just make a little bit more room for the kick drum. So now it's side chained and there's a little bit of EQ carved out for it. And then I put that A1 stereo control at the end of it and I monoed out the frequencies. It's at 206. I probably want it more around like 150. These damn kids have been in here messing with my sub bass. Next up. This is Keyzone Classic by Bitsonic. It's a free piano VST. It has five different instruments inside of it. I'm using uh, the first one, just the one called Keyzone Piano. And I wrote a simple little chord progression. All right, so here's an EQ. Um, I've rolled off quite a bit of the lows. Right here, I've done some resonance sweeping, and basically what that is, is you take a little notch like this, and you look around for bad sounds. And at 1980, sounded like this. Ugh. I'm going to turn that down. And you don't want to take it all the way down to the floor, which is, I think, a mistake people make with resonance sweeping sometimes. You're not wanting to completely remove the frequency. You're just wanting to rebalance it. So I'm going to take it to about negative 8 dB. Let's turn this band off and listen. And then with it. Cleans it up really nice.
Next, I hit it with that Roth Air again. Let's just listen to a little A-B because we've already been over this one. This is just uh, a good, fun little plug-in right here. It's called Zvep by Clevger. Yeah. This is a phaser flanger chorus. When they're linked, the exact same effect is happening on the left and right side. But what I think is fun is you can unlink them and then you can make the right do something unique and then you can make the left side uh, do something unique. just mangles it just a little bit. I'm going to turn it off real quick. And then back on. Next, I added a plugin called Crush. This is a Bit Crush plugin. It also has a sample reduction and a distortion. Right over here, we got a parallel option to where we can run the dry separate and the wet separate. Your main three parameters are drive. Bit crush. And then sample reduction. You can be really subtle with this. You can go way over the top with it. There's also a little LFO. You can modulate the effect. I'm going to reload this little preset. And this is how I have it on my piano. This is HY Delay 4 by HY Plugins. This right here is a find. It's a delay plugin, and it has absolutely everything I want in a delay plugin, and I can't believe I found that in a free plugin. It has a uh, regular and ping pong. It has synced or free. You can link the left and right, or you can unlink them. I usually leave them linked. Um, you have the feedback, which is the number of time it delays. Um, this is cross feedback, which I'm not totally sure, but I think in cases where you have like a whole lot of feedback where it's going to be delayed for a long time, I think the cross feedback feeds that back into the beginning. And then that kind of starts to like offset itself, I think. If I'm wrong, please comment and explain it to me. And here it is, the high pass filter and low pass filter. Just like the reverb, you want to be able to tone down the high end and tone down the low end, especially the low end so you're not cluttering it up. This is also huge right here, the ducker. What this does is it gets out of the way of the instrument. So I have this on the piano. When the piano hits, the delay ducks down, and then it kind of comes back up and start. you start to hear the delay. It kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You still hear the instrument kind of dry, but then you're also still hearing the delay. So let's hear what the piano sounds like so far. There's that delay. There's also randomizers on this thing. I almost forgot. Um, you can randomize all these different parameters, the EQ, the amp, uh, the delay. It's crazy. This plugin basically has more features than I'd hoped I'd find. HY plugins, salute. This is the A1 trigger gate, also by Alex Hilton. This is just a really simple gating plugin. Um, Super straightforward. You got your attack, decay, sustain, release over here. You have a dry, wet knob, so you can kind of run it in parallel. Um, this swing knob is super critical because you can get the groove right. Um, I have it set to triplets right now, so it's, that's kind of swinging it as well. I put it on the piano at the end of this chord. And I know it's a little subtle, but what I did, I took this envelope and effect and I copied it onto a couple more instruments. So there's going to be a few different things in the beat doing this little trigger gate dance that I'll show you in just a minute. So let's hear what we got so far. It's 
starting to sound like a beat. Next up, I have this chip synth. And it's doubling uh, the piano chords. Now, this is the Zampler RX sample player. It's a sample player, but it has all the parameters of a synth. You have three LFOs over here, a mod envelope, filter envelope, all these controls, a separate effects page with a phaser chorus delay, reverb. Even this drive right here has a whole bunch of different types of drive. So the modulation possibilities are very high on this. And while it is a rompler being that you can't change the original sample, you can really, really customize it. This is a music box patch. That sounds really cool. Let's see what else we got in here. This hunt him down is a crazy trumpet. And they even have like these crazy little samples. These are wild. So yeah, back to this chip synth. We've got the EQ going. Uh, the EQ is just rolling off the lows. We've got, oh, here's is a new plugin. This is the Pechineg, Pechineg Tremolo. This is just a really nice tremolo plugin. Um, it can go free, it can be synced to the host. If you set it to quarter notes or eighth notes or whatever, and it still sounds a little offbeat, maybe it's a little early or a little late, this phase is what will put it back on beat for you. Next up, this is Pancake 2 by Cable Guys. This is just an auto pan plugin. Um, you can sit here and draw in your own curves. Let's play this real quick. This is sort of uh, how extreme you want it. Got a speed. Super, super cool. Next up we have our guitar. And this is coming from Another sample player, this one is called Independence by Magix. This is kind of like Zampler or Contact. Uh, it has its own little library of sounds. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff in here. There's uh, acoustic drums. The drums in here actually really sounded great. You got bass, guitars, pianos, synthesizers, all kinds of stuff in here. Um, this is what the acoustic guitar sounds like that I'm using with Independence. So let's walk through this effect chain I have for the guitar. First and foremost, I have an EQ rolling off the lows. This plugin is called La Petite Excite, and it's by a company called Fine Cut Bodies. This is another saturator plugin, and with this guitar, I wanted to bring out some of the high end. Let's hear the difference. sounds so much better with this on. This saturator is cool because it gives me the option of just doing the highs and I just wanted to bring out a little treble in this guitar. Um, this is a little bit of a compressor threshold that I think I need to turn up a little bit that kind of tames 
the highs a little bit. Um, next, I hit it with the Roth Air again. This, uh, this guy keeps popping up. But listen to the difference. Here's without it. And here's with it. Without it. And with it. This plugin is the best. Um, I used Crush again, uh, very subtly, if you take a listen. It almost sounds like there's a little heavy distorted electric guitar in the background doubling the notes. Then I hit it with good old HY Delay 4, my new favorite delay. So let's hear the guitar with and without this whole effect chain real quick. Here's without. And with. And with. All right, let's hear a little bit of that in context. Sounded pretty good. Um, this right here is another Zampler patch, and this is just doubling the guitar notes. So it sounds like this. You hear that little whistling in the background? It's subtle, but for me, when I hear it in the mix, it really helped um, the guitar jump out a little bit more to have a little bit of backup from this little whistly piano sound. I have some chimes right here. This is another free alpha patch. This is just one of the patches that came with the synth. Sounds like this. Hit it with the EQ, and then I added this A1 trigger gate, and it sounds like this. All right, next up, this is the Sauna Tina orchestra this is a big library of instruments i use sonatina for two different instruments on this beat one is just the simple strings oh and the strings does the trigger gate um, to match the piano also from sonatina i added a choir sample so I made my own little thing where a low sample blends into a high one. It sounds like this. And then into the high. Here's what it sounds like with the beat. On the choir sample, um, got the pancake, and I got my reverb. All right, this is Tyrell N6 by, is this Yuhi? I know they're the guys that make Diva. That's a really cool synth, and Zebra. I've never uh, tried to say this out loud. Um, <laughs> But this is a really cool free synth that comes with a ton of free presets. I'll just show you. Like, there's all kinds of banks. I used this preset.
Um, it's just a really cool preset if you play any kind of dissonant, unresolved chord. <laughs> Sounds like some like Steve Miller band, old school psychedelic. So this little chord only happens like three times in this whole song. Right here at the beginning when it kicks in, it sounds like this. So also with the Tyrell N6, I made these three little pieces. These are kind of like background noises, little extra bits. Also on this drone up here, it does the little um, trigger gate envelope that's going to go along with the strings and the piano. I'll play you what that sounds like real quick all together. Next, there's just a sweep effects, which is just another one of the Zampler patches. Simple effect. I put some delay and some svep and some pancake on it. There's a synth lead that this also came from Zampler. For some reason, I converted it to audio, but it sounds like this. And then to top it all off, I went to archive.org and I downloaded me an old public domain song from the 20s so I could get a little vocal sample. And let's listen to this whole thing. Now we are ready to master this baby. Alright, so here I've bounced this down a pre-master. Um, you can see we've got plenty of headroom. This is another thing. There's no magical number that your pre-master needs to be. This is what plenty of headroom looks like. Um, this is what a little bit of headroom looks like. And this is what absolutely no headroom looks like. So all we really got to do is make sure that there's a lot. First in my chain, this is the Tokyo Dons Slick EQ. The first thing I'm going to do with this is it has a high pass frequency over here and I'm going to put that on 20 hertz and that's just going to cut all the remaining mud out of my mix. Um, some people roll this up to like 30 hertz because that's about where our hearing cuts off as far as bass. but I like to take it on down to like 20 to be to be safe. All I'm really doing with this mastering EQ is boosting some highs. So here's what it sounds like without it. And with it. So that brings up some nice crispy top end. Next is the stereo control and just like I did on the bass, I'm just going to put this, I have it at 180, so from 180 down to zero is in mono and from 180 um, up to the rest of the frequency range is in stereo. And that's just going to make sure that the mix is tight. 
Next up, we're going to do a little saturation. Let's turn this down and bring it in. Sounds pretty good. Like I was saying earlier, since this is my mastering chain, I'm going to put this on keep low, meaning this saturator isn't going to mess with my low end. Um, because I don't want anything messing with my low end right now. I've just about had it. Next up, surprise, surprise, Roth Air. You've seen it. You loved it. Here's without it. Here's with it. Next up is the Tokyo Dawn compressor again. Let's put this in Delta mode and see what's happening. It's nice and choppy. I've got a moderate attack, a really fast release. Um, I've turned the soft knee almost all the way down to make it nice and choppy. And basically what I'm trying to do is just catch these peaks and it's going to gain reduce these peaks a little bit and that's going to give us a little bit more room to boost the final volume. This is the loud max limiter. Um, this is going to do kind of what the fab filter L2 or the isotope maximizer or the waves L2 would be doing. It's just a brick wall limiter. Let's uh, turn the beat back on. And I'm going to pull this up to about negative six. About negative five. Without it. The last thing on this chain is the U Lean Loudness Meter too, and this is just um, a simple meter that's going to tell us how loud our master is. Um, negative 11 LUFS is really loud. Um, the Spotify standard is negative 14. So if I uploaded this song to Spotify, they would actually have to turn it down a little bit um, to stream it. So this is really good. It's, it's more than enough, and it still sounds good, which is perfect, which is what I was looking for. And let's let this rip one more time. Anytime. 